Let's talk about breast implants. There's a lot of confusion with breast implants about the size, shape, um, profiles, silicone versus saline, all those things. So let's, let's address breast implants in this little segment right now. So here we have a bunch of implants. We have a saline implant and three different silicone implants. So saline implant, saline is salt water. Saline implant is a silicone shell. So it still has silicone, the shell, the, the bag that holds it is silicone. And this silicone shell is exactly the same whether it's a saline implant or with a silicone implant. The difference is that saline implants come empty. They have a little port into which I'm able to put a little fill tube and inject saline. So when we do surgeries, I take this big implant, I'm able to roll it out into a cigar and we slide it into a small incision. And then once inside the breast space, it opens up and fills in. Silicone implants, exact same shell, but they come pre-filled with medical grade silicone. So they are fully filled. And that's why they require a bigger incision because I can take, take this big implant and I'm gonna squeeze it in through a small opening. And that's why we use my tool, InstaBoot. It's a funnel device that allows me to take a bigger implant and squeeze it in through a small opening. Next thing is let's talk about profiles. People get confused by them. So here we have a low profile, moderate, and full. These three implants have the exact same volume, but in a different configuration, in a low profile, which is a wide, flat implant. A little more narrow, fuller is moderate, and the narrowest and highest, this is where the high comes from, is the high profile. High profile is, is a little bit of a bad name. Full profile is a better term because people confuse the term. When they talk about high profiles, they think high profile gives them a high sitting breast. It does not. It gives you a breast that on a table sticks out high or when you have it on your chest, it sticks out more forward. So high profile implants tend to be a little bit narrower and rounder. They give you the faker, more round, push up kind of a look. Moderate profile implants give you a more natural, more teardrop look. And the low profile, we use very rarely. I typically use low profile implants in breast lift patients where I'm simply just adding a little bit of volume as a little pancake that just pushes the natural breast tissue forward a little bit. Low profile implant is wide. Moderate profile is a little bit narrower for the same volume. And high profile is the narrowest for the same volume. These are same volume. These are same volume implants, but different shapes. Saline is really an empty shell, which we fill in surgery. The benefit of saline implant is that it's just a bag of water. If it ever leaks and ruptures, this bag pops open. It's, it doesn't explode. People think it explodes. It's just like a little pinhole needle. It's like someone poked it with a needle and fluid comes out, the saline, your body absorbs it, that's it. These are silicone implants. Now these are the latest generation implants. People talk about them as the gummy bear. What that means is if you cut it in half, the silicone doesn't fall, doesn't ooze out. It can assist it like a gummy bear, but you still have a little bit coming up. So if there ever is a leak and rupture with saline, the water comes out, your breast deflates, you know, right away. Obvious. With silicone, if there's a leak or rupture, it kind of sits there. Your body doesn't absorb the silicone. It's called a silent rupture. There's no way to know it. You can't feel it, you can't look at it. The only way to diagnose a silent rupture is through an MRI. And that is why FDA recommends that after silicone, not after sling, but after silicone breast augmentation, patients get an MRI three years after the surgery, and then every two years, to ensure that the implant is intact. When deciding between silicone and saline breast implants, if you go online and you read about it, most people will talk about silicone. Silicone is the better implant, everybody wants to have silicone. It's not the best implant for everybody. In my practice, about 50% of patients get saline. I, I like saline for multiple reasons. The reason why some would choose a silicone implant is twofold. One, they feel softer, it's nice gooey. Saline, it's really a water balloon, it feels like a water balloon, so this feels softer. And if you look at it, silicone seems like it's smoother, has less rippling. So in general, silicone implants are ripple less than saline, but they still ripple. People have this misconception if they get silicone implants, there is no rippling. There always is rippling. All implants ripple. If you look at this implant, it looks nice and smooth. But when we put it in here, it kind of settles down. You see all these little ripples? This is rippling. This is normal, all implants ripple. The reason there is rippling is because the silicone shell, the shell that's been filled with silicone, is not fully filled. It's not fully filled to make it nice and soft. If they fill it fully, you can see it's beautifully smooth, but then becomes hard. So implants are slightly underfilled to make them soft, 
but it means the price you pay is some rippling. And the rippling is present in all implants. Everybody gets rippling. People that are skinnier have less fat to cover up these irregularities, have more visible rippling. People that have more of the natural breast tissue on top of the implant see less. So when people get rippling, the solution is not to change the implant, but what people sometimes do is do fat grafting. They fat graft on top of the implant to add more padding. Or you can do what I do, have some Nutella. Saline implants. So saline implants are a silicone shell. So even though they're saline, they still have silicone in them. It's a silicone shell which is filled with saline salt water. The benefit of a saline implant is that it's just water. If it ever leaks and ruptures, it leaks out, your body absorbs the water, it's about as safe as it can be. Not to say there's anything wrong with silicone, but it's just water. If an implant leaks and ruptures and the water absorbs, your breast deflates, you know right away something happened. So you don't need to do regular MRIs to check for silent rupture, which can be happening with silicone implants. So you don't have to worry about the MRIs. Uh, it's the hassle and potential cost of having MRIs. Next, because the implant goes in empty and it's filled up on the side, I'm able to take that little shell, roll it up, and in insert it through a smaller incision than I would require for a silicone implant. And that's why I do my tiny scar breast augmentations with silicone breast implants. Finally, because uh, it's just saline, there's a slightly lower risk of capsular contracture with saline implants compared to silicone implants. If you do have a rupture, this is maybe a little bit easier to exchange. You simply take out one ruptured bag, put a new one in, fill it up. With silicone, you may need to go and clean up any potential silicone that may have oozed out to make sure you leave nothing behind. One other thing that I like about silicone implants is that they're adjustable. Silicone comes as this, you know, we get this implant, this is what we have, that's what we insert. Saline, because I fill it up at a time of surgery, I can make very little fine adjustments, just, just a little fine tuning to give the symmetry just as best as I can. Silicone implants come in set sizes, you know, 360, 380, 390. Saline allows me to go to 360, 361, 362, 363. That little difference doesn't really make much much difference, but allows me just a little finesse just to get it just right. So thank you for watching. If you have any more questions, please feel to message us, leave a question in the comments below, and keep watching.